All right, guys, we are moving on to learning target three in our systems unit. We're going to solve a system. By now, we know that a system is two lines, two linear equations um, that usually intersect. We've seen lines that don't intersect. Um, those are parallel lines, and we'll continue to see those. But um, so we've been solving these solution or these systems using graphs, uh, which is fine. But one thing is that it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of space. And when we get into some more complex linear systems, um, they won't meet within kind of the 10 by 10 box that we've been using. They're going to meet at random places. Um, they're going to meet at decimal places. So we need to have some other tools in our box uh, to know how to solve some of these equations. There's two uh, ways that we solve most systems. The first one that we're going to learn today is substitution. It's where we take something one part of the one equation and we substitute it into the other equation. The second part is elimination, um, where we eliminate part of the equations and use that to solve for one variable. Both are valuable and both are more valuable in different situations. So we're going to take a look at how to do each and then also talk about when to use each, when's the best time to use both of those. So let's look at substitution. The substitution method um, has some steps, and these aren't necessarily steps that you're going to explicitly follow each time. Um, but basically, we're going to substitute the expression from um, one of the equations into the other equation. So substitution best works when you have one variable all by itself. Okay, y equals 5 minus x. Um, so that's y. 5 minus x is y. Okay, now if you think about the solution to a system is where two lines meet. Now where these two lines meet, they share the x and the y at that point. They both have that x and that y, and that's the solution. That x and that y are going to be the solution to that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this y, this y that is 5 minus x, because y is 5 minus x, we're just going to put it here, okay? Because we know that is y, and when these two equations meet, they're going to be equal. Then we're going to substitute 5 minus x in for y. So this is how it's going to look. We're going to use the second equation. So 1 is going to equal 4x plus 3. Now instead of the y, we're going to use this expression, 5 minus x, okay? So we've replaced y. We've substituted 5 minus x in for y. What this has done is that it's removed y from the equation, and now we only have one variable, and when we have one variable, we can solve for it, okay? So when we have one variable, we can find out what x is. So if we reduce this, we have 1 equals 4x, and then we'll use the distributive property here. 3 times 5 is going to give us 15, and then 3 times a negative x is negative 3x's. Then we'll have 1 equals 4x, and negative 3x is going to just give us 1x plus 15. And then if we minus 15 from both sides, um, we will have negative 14 equals x. Okay. So what we've just found is that this point where these two lines meet, the x is negative 14. Okay. We don't know the y yet. To find the y, we take this x now, and we can take this x, we can plug it into either of these equations, because this x will be this x, and this x is also this x. So we can plug it into either. If you're noticing, this equation is going to be much easier to plug it into. I would rather take 5 minus a negative 14 than solve for y if I have 1 equals 4 times a negative 14 plus 3y. That's going to be a lot more work, but you can do either and get the same answer. We'll stick with the easy one. y is going to equal 5 minus this negative 14x, or negative 14, not x. So that's y equals 5 plus 14, so y equals 19. All right, so now we've found out that this y where they meet is 19. So this point is negative 14, 19. So the solution point is negative 14, 19. And to get that, we substituted part of one equation in for the other equation.
Okay, let's look at some different examples. Um, here, it's really easy when you have just one term that's just given to you, okay? Uh, this is going to be x equals 7. That's just a straight line at 7, right? And then this equation sometime um, meets it. All right, so we're looking again for this point x, y. What's nice is that we're given that x is 7. We know on this line x is always 7, so we already know that x is 7. Really, all we're trying to find is this y. So we're just going to take the x that we're given and put it into the other equation for y. So that's going to be 2, or for x, excuse me, 2 times 7 plus y will equal 5. So 14 plus y will equal 5. So minus 14 from both sides. And y is going to equal a negative 9. All right? So this point is 7, negative 9, where these two lines meet. All right, another not as easy but easier is that is when you're given just one of the equation or one of the variables equals something simple, this one term over here. Since we know x is 2y, x is 2y, um, we're just going to take this 2y and put it in for not that y. That was, a, that was a mistake that I made and you might make. But 2y is x, so we're going to put it in for x. So I'm going to replace x with 2y in this first equation. So again, we're looking for a point where two lines meet, and we're going to find that x and that y. Okay. So we're taking 2, and then instead of x, I'm going to write 2y, because we know at this point um, these two equations are the same. So this x is going to equal this x, and this x equals 2y, so this x is going to equal 2y. And now we have plus 8y equals 1. This time, the difference is <coughs> that we are solving for y instead of x. So we have 4y here, because 2 times 2 is 4, plus 8y equals 1, um, which means 12y's equal 1, which means y equals 1 12th. All right, so we know that at this point, this is 1 12th. And now all we have to do is plug that y back into the equation. Think about it. Which equation would you rather plug y into? I'd rather plug it into here because x is going to equal 2 times 1 12th is pretty easy. That's just y. x equals 2 over 12. That's just x equals 1 6th. So this point of intersection is 1 6th comma 1 12th perfect example of why we don't always solve by graphing because that would be a really difficult point to estimate on a graph that 1 6th comma 1 12th. All right let's move in to um, some more examples. Wait did we just do this one? Yeah we just did this one so we're not going to do that that was the first one I gave you. Um, if if you had space on your note sheet for that one, I hope I, hope I didn't go over that. Um, but go back to the beginning of the video and put those notes there. Um, let's do this one. Here we have y equals 1.5x and y equals 12 minus 2.5x. What's nice here is that they both equal y. So we can take, and if I rewrite this, I like to rewrite these because I can manipulate them for you. If I rewrite both of these equations, what's nice is because at the point where they meet, they will be equal, right? These two, when they meet, they will be equal. This is the same point on both of them. This is where the lines are the same. This is where the equations are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side and this side, and I'm going to set them equal to each other. Now that they're equal to each other, I can solve for x. So I'm going to add 2.5 x's here add 2.5 x's here, and I get 4 x's equals 12, divide by 4, divide by 4, and x equals 3. So I know that this point is 3 comma something. I don't know what that something is yet. i got to plug it into here or here. This one looks easier, so I'm going to take y equals 1 and a half times 3, okay? 1 and a half times 3 
one and a half times three is going to give me four point five. All right. At the beginning of class, we will work on these two special cases. Um, but before class, I'd like you to try solving this system. So decide what you're going to substitute, where you're going to substitute it, and find the x and the y that satisfy both of these equations at the same time.